Welcome back to Introduction to Agroecology, Unit 8. We're going to go over Lesson 2, um, talking about water in the soil. Looking at what is the impact of moisture on agroecosystems or lack thereof, um, the water movement into and out of the soil. And there's different ways that it gets in and it, and it leaves the soil that we have. We have infiltration is where it the rain comes down and it infiltrates or goes into the soil. And then percolation is where it goes down through the soil into the different structures. There's evaporation is how it leaves the soil. And that is the sun heat warms it up. And if the soil's wet, it dries it out and it evaporates up into the atmosphere. Uh, transpiration is another way it leaves plants or trees and how it does that is through the somata it um, will get rid of the water. Um, what we have to do is figure out how can we have sustainable uses of that water so that we're using it to the best of the ability and using the least that we can. In terms of the infiltration it's uh, the ability of rain, snow melt, if it's irrigation that's another way it can get there of that water to go into the soil and be able to be used by the plants. Some of the issues you can have with infiltration is if you have surface runoff, in other words, it's coming down so fast that it runs off as opposed to going into the soil. Uh, even when it's raining, you can have evaporation issues or if you have too much sun, not enough shady area around the plants you have that you can lose a lot of water to evaporation. The type of soil you have is going to make a difference. We talked uh, in the last unit that if you have sandy soil, that that type of soil will not retain water as well as a clay soil would or soil in between there. The terrain of the land, whether you're flat or sloped, is going to make a difference on how long water will stay there before it will infiltrate or run off. If you have sloped land, of course, you're not going to have as much water infiltration because it's running down that slope. As opposed to flat, it's going to have to percolate in, so it takes longer to do that. The type of vegetative cover you have will certainly make a difference in terms of how much water is going to get to an area. If you have a huge tree cover for the forest, not as much water gets through that because the leaves will take part of that um, area go on the outside of the tree and not necessarily close to the inside of the tree. And, of course, in addition to that, for the impact of soil moisture, the amount of rainfall you have certainly has an effect. There's an average for each area. Some areas have more rainfall than others, but if you don't have enough rainfall, you're not going to have uh, an impact. It's going to have a definite negative impact for you. We're looking at percolation, and that's where once the upper layers are saturated, gravitational forces are going to pull that excess water deeper into the soil profile. So that's how that happens. It's not magic. Gravity is what pulls that water down. Um, the rate at which that percolation is going to occur is the soil texture, structure, and porosity. The texture is uh, the types of and shapes and sizes of that soil. The structure um, is also part of that texture. Soil porosity is how, how porous it is is what the words derive from. So in other words, how fast sand is going to go through faster because there's larger spaces between the particles. And clay has smaller spaces, so it's going to go slower. Also, animal root channels and uh, burrow holes are two things that will affect it. The animal root channels would be worms going through there. The other thing that's going to make a difference, too, is uh, weeds that they, or roots, excuse me, that grow that Eventually, when they die, they leave holes, and that's another way that's going to change the rate of that percolation. So if you have the right kinds of plants that you grow, you possibly could have a very porous soil. Evaporation is how we're losing the soil, and it's loss of moisture to the atmosphere. We talked earlier. Um, some of the factors that affect this is what is the current moisture content. If you have a dry soil, there's certainly not going to be much lost to evaporation because there isn't much moisture there. The, uh, the temperature of your soil will make a difference. The colder it is, the less that's going to be in a form that will uh, evaporate. Uh, the atmospheric, te atmospheric temperature will make a difference. And also uh, how much wind you have. If you have a lot of blowing, 
the higher the wind rate is, the more water that will evaporate based on that. And also, it could affect the total amount of soil moisture because it's evaporating. It could affect how much is deeper if it's taking, if it's evaporating off and not soaking into the ground, you might have less moisture deeper within your soil profile. Transpiration, that's where water goes out through the somata of a leaf, whether it's a uh, corn, soybean, wheat, whatever farm type thing it is, bushes will do it, trees will do it. So everything that has leaves are going to leave, are going to lose some soil moisture through the somata. And it's just little openings in the leaf. Um, great amount of moisture is lost through root uptake of water balancing with the somata leaf moisture loss. Uh, another way of saying that is as the plant takes up moisture for nutrition through the roots, it goes up through the xylem and it goes to the somata where it's lost because it can't keep too much water. It's just a balance it keeps all the time. So you possibly, if you don't get enough water, you can get to a point where a plant becomes dormant and the leaves or the plant leaves the ecosystem entirely. In other words, it dies. Um, here, looking at soil moisture, th there's a lot of terms that are used in measuring this content of the soil. And there is a website you can go to here um, that will show you different terms. Uh, and it would be good for you to go possibly print out so it'll help you out some of the different terms that you can use in um, looking at soil moisture. Um, and explain it a little bit more than what I'm going to explain in the next few slides. Um, some of the terms for measuring moisture content is the field capacity, and that's how much water can be held uh, in an area. Uh, capillary, and that's the uh, ability of that water to flow through the soil. Gravitational, that's when there's too much water on the surface and it pulls it down through. Hydroscopic water is in an easy available water uh, and then they're talked about a permanent wilting point a point at which when you get to uh, moisture content the there's a point at which it will permanently wilt in other words it didn't have water for long enough because it's starving it eventually will get so wilty and falling over that it will never recover from that easily available water is just water that is or a plant can get to it without putting out much effort. Um, for looking at capillary um, water management, it's the movement that's caused by the suction created when a plant takes water up through its roots. And as the soil moisture is decreasing, the suction draws water into the lower region of a plant area. If there isn't enough soil moisture available, it, it's that permanent wilting point that we talked about on the prior slide. And what happens is when you don't get enough water, the roots try to extend deeper and deeper into the soil to find moisture further down. In some cases it finds it, in some cases it doesn't. Sometimes it takes so much energy, that's, and that's one reason in dry soil where plants seem to go in a big hurry if you don't water them, and then you water them and they come back. Well, if you wait too long to water them, that, that plant tried to get ex roots extended into the soil and use so much energy to do that because it didn't have water and ended up dying. Um, for maximizing the use of water, you want to efficiently use that water. Uh, and a common way that you can measure how efficient a plant uses water is to look at the amount of biomass that's produced by a plant. And that's basically measuring the amount of moisture that's lost from the surface evaporation and transpiration. In other words, is it still growing? If it's growing at a decent rate and you have a good plant, then that means that that efficiency of water use was pretty good. And of course, that'll vary based on the rainfall that you get. Other methods of optimizing your uh, water use are selecting of crops that need less water if you're in an area that you don't have a lot of water or a lot of available water. Um, 
fallow cropping, um, kind of a strange name for or what you call it. Fallow means you don't grow a crop, okay? And by not having a crop, there's no roots taking moisture out of the soil. So whatever uh, moisture gets in a soil, a lot of it will stay there because you're not using it for the plant. Um, you can also uh, manage evaporation loss by using organic mulch, and that's going around the base of the plant. Um, what it does is it covers the field and it reduces the loss of water in the area. In other words, wa there's more water available, so that can potentially increase the yield you get for your crop. Um, No-till practices also help because you're not opening up the soil so it dries out. There's not as much as it's going to dry if it's not open. Um, leaving crop residue, sort of like having uh, organic mulch. It is, in fact, it is a mulch. It's just not a pretty looking one that you can use to help um, keep the soil moisture there. And then soil mulch, mulch, dry soil is added over soil in regions with wet and dry seasons. And it's just adding more to it. So what's there, if you had something that's fairly uh, damp, it would keep less, there would be less of a chance, I guess I should say, <coughs> that you would um, have your soil down low drying out. 